Hey, what's up everybody? It's Ori Evans back again with another color grading tutorial here in DaVinci Resolve. And today we're going to be doing something that you're going to be probably doing a lot in all of your grades and that is separating your foreground skin tones from your background. It doesn't just apply to skin tones though. It can also be used for green lizards or orange tabbies or red books, literally just anything you want to separate from your background. We're going to be talking about our layer mixer, our parallel mixer, as well as our keyer or our qualifier and the window tool. So without further ado, I have a already transformed automatically using YRGB color managed. If you don't know about that, then you can watch my video about that over here. But what we're essentially going to do is first use our qualifier. Now you're going to see an eyedropper tool. If you don't see the eyedropper tool, what you need to do is navigate down to the bottom left of your viewer. And this is a very important tab as well because it hosts a lot of other tools that you'll be using throughout. Power window, image white, open effects, overlay, color chart. You can explore the thing on your own. But if you don't have a qualifier, this is where you find it. Click on it and you're going to see as we mark over her skin tone, we're going to click on it and kind of drag over just to make sure we're getting all those tones that it changes down here. Now you don't see anything. We need to essentially highlight it using our highlight tool in the top left right here. Click on that and boom, you'll see everything that we have selected. So we don't want all this background stuff right here, of course. So what we're going to do is kind of take our width down. I don't want all those greens. I don't need all those, all those greens until I'm about, okay, well, I've gone a little bit too far and about right there. I think I've got a lot of her skin. I'll take it over to the left a little bit because her hands are a bit red. Make it a bit wider. Boom. There we go. Now we have a lot of stuff that we still don't want selected. We're going to go down our saturation. Typically, if you've lit your subject correctly, then they shouldn't be completely in the dark. Of course, if it's a creative decision, it doesn't matter. But if we go up here, you'll see instantly all that stuff kind of just becomes deselected because she's the only thing that's kind of lit in the scene in the given color. So right there is about good. And you can tweak the luminance as well. That's about good. I'm getting some of that stuff out of there that I don't want. And you can have a matte finesse tool over here where you can essentially finesse the matte. Pre-filter kind of takes away those noisy bits and a blur radius kind of blurs it out. You don't want to go super far with this because it's going to halo out and look very weird. So you want to keep that kind of down, but just enough that you're not having the edges so harsh. Clean black kind of takes away from the mask and clean white kind of widens your mask. So we have an issue here in that we have this red bit flower that's still selected and I could kind of tweak my selection a little bit more to get it out of there. But then I start to kind of lose her hands if I get away from the reds. So the way we're going to pretty much get through that is using a window and I'm going to take this pin tool and it's an interview. So she's going to be sitting in the same spot. I just have to make sure my net is wide enough that she doesn't get out of it, but also excluding the part I don't want. So I'm just going to take this pen tool and draw over her like that. Boom. Now I have to watch through, right? And make sure. So she's going to be sitting down. Of course, we're not going to use any of these parts, but when she's sitting down, got to make sure she's within that frame the entire time. And she is. So that's the thing about a qualification and windows. If you're tracking, you have to be mindful of the movement because anything could affect the color information that your camera was getting. So you got to be mindful of how things are moving around. So now that we take the highlight off, we have a good key, a good qualification. We're going to make a layer note. And the reason we make a layer note, I'm going to get into that a little bit later. I want to make sure that she is on the bottom layer because if she's on the top layer, she will be red for some reason as the background. For some reason, the layer mixer has your top layer. It has hierarchy priority as the bottom one, maybe because it's closer. So it's first and the top one is your background essentially. And you'll see what I'm talking about right here. I go to our primaries and I take our gamuts blue, watch her skin tones. They do not change. The background 
changes. We can go for like a little romance look, make it a bit warmer, make it a bit more fashion, go to purple, or go to blue and make it a bit more dramatic, a teal. The possibilities are endless because now I can not only separate her, but also start creating a mood, creating my grade, my creative look, right? Instantly. That's how powerful this tool is. You want to separate those two things to bring attention to them. So another cool trick you can use really quickly when you have a selection like this is your vector scope. We have, you get to that, to the bottom right, you have parade, waveform, vector scope, histogram, CIE, chromatic, chromaticity, vector scope. So you have a flesh line here. This is what this white line is. If you don't see that, you can go to your settings right here and you can go to show skin tone indicator. That's basically gonna tell you where all your skin tones kind of live in. This red bit right here, it's kind of her hands and you can see her skin is like right along this line. So you can see if I have it selected and I start going to the green, it's gonna go to the left. It's gonna start tinting her towards the yellow, the green, you can see it, the G down there. Start going to purple, it's gonna take her to red, magenta, weird stuff, right? So you wanna make sure that your skin tone is always lined up on those, that line right there. So that way you know whatever, wherever it is, it's displayed, that it's correct. Because your monitor could not be displaying it the right way. And you can't be eyeballing that. Just use your scopes. That's what they're there for. They're very important. So what we're going to talk about last is why I didn't use a parallel mixer. Now the reason I use a layer mixer is because I like to think of it as an isolator. When I have a key or a mask, it's going to isolate that away from my other nodes. Even though it's mixing them together, it's keeping them separate. If I were to, once again, take her to a blue tone, take this to a blue tone, you can see her skin tone is not changed. But if I take this and change it into a parallel node, boom, her skin is under that. It's a part of that because the parallel mixer does not take into account isolation in my masks for whatever reason. And that to me is the main difference between these two and why I'd rather use a layer mixer when I'm trying to separate. A layer mixer isolates things, a parallel mixer does not isolate them. That's how I like to think about that. So that's pretty much the whole video. Pretty much we've learned how to separate any tone really, but mainly our skin tones from the background and create a mood instantly as well as any other color we'd like. Also getting our skin tones correctly within our vector scope and using that to make sure we're getting the most accurate skin tones and the difference between a layer mixer and a parallel mixer. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.